Today we're talking about the drip rifle, a battlefield innovation that is credited with saving over 30,000 lives in World War I. But first, an ad, because I just had a kid and diapers are expensive. This video is brought to you by JX Tactical, maker of my personal favorite holster, their trademarked Fat Guy holster. This holster sits lower in your waistline, allowing more room for tactical fluff. I'm trying to tell you it's the only holster on the market made with beer gut friendly technology. So if you're in the market for a new holster, I would personally recommend checking out JX Tactical. All right, back to the story, December 1915. 80,000 British Anzac soldiers are pinned down by the Ottoman Empire need to retreat and evacuate in order to live another day. It is projected by British leadership that if they do, 30,000 men will be killed. This is because the Ottoman Trench and the Anzac Trench are so close they can actually see one another. And if the Ottomans see the Anzacs retreating, they will charge and they will slaughter them. Obviously, this is not acceptable. They need to come up with a plan. They need a way to make it appear as though they're manning the front line when they aren't. They need to sham or skate on a scale that the world has never seen before. To aid in this effort, a young Lance Corporal devises a way to shoot a rifle without actually being there. It would later become known as the drip rifle. It's pretty simple. You take an empty ration can, tie a piece of string to it, tie that piece of string to the trigger. You then take the slack from that string, put it underneath a sandbag, and put another ration can full of water on top. This was trench warfare in World War I though, so fresh water was pretty scarce, so it was more than likely urine. Whenever you're ready, you poke a hole in the bottom of the top ration can, and water drips down to the can below. After the bottom can fills up enough, gravity takes over, pulls the string out from underneath the sandbag, drops the can to the ground, and pulls the trigger. This could take anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes minutes after poking the initial hole. After they figured out how to do that, shit got out of hand. Basically, they picked 2,000 dudes to stay behind as a rear guard. The remaining 78,000 would evacuate over the course of the next four nights. The 2,000 in rear guard continued to fight on the front line, while also setting up countless drip rifle configurations that were manned by scarecrows. And the entire time this is going down, they are just double fist chain smoking cigarettes to give the illusion that there's far more men on the front line than there really were. So then when the time comes for the last 2,000 men to escape, they run through, poke all the holes in the top cans, and they fucking bounce. They slip away into the night like a fucking fart in the wind and they're just gone. The rifles start firing on their own and the Ottomans never caught on to it. And that's the end of the fucking story. 30,000 men were supposed to die. Zero died. Not a single one. It's considered to be one of the best retreats in military history. That's not a retreat. These motherfuckers figured out how to work from home. This has to be the biggest example of it's not dumb if it works in human history. Do you have any idea how fucking mad the Ottomans had to have been when they finally rushed the trench and realized these motherfuckers have been AFK for the last four hours? They just ran to that trench through no man's land, probably getting the biggest adrenaline dump of their entire life, hopped in that ditch ready to fight to the death and found nothing but cigarette butts and unmanned guns. Fuck me. I really have gone. Even worse, imagine if one of them got shot. How do you explain to that guy's family that he got shot by a bucket of piss? There's just some Australian at their new campsite eating chow and he gets the old Xbox achievement pop up above his head. Sure. And this very well may be the best example of deception ever used on the battlefield, and if you think of one better, you let me know in the comments below. In conclusion, it is entirely historically accurate to say that during World War I, the Australian Lance Corporal Underground, through their actions, taught the entire Ottoman Empire to respect the drip. Thank you for watching. Best way to support the channel is go buy yourself some merch at thefatelectrician.com. Quack bang, out.